Alex, and I'm here to talk to you about Svelte. So, um, yeah. Has anyone heard of Svelte uh, in the audience? Okay. And, and how many of you people have actually used Svelte at all? No. So that's good. That makes my job easier. Right. So Svelte, yeah. We'll, we'll see a bit more about it. So this is me, I'm Alex, front-end developer at Hook. And I've lived in Singapore for about four years now. Um, some of you may remember me from my GraphQL talk um, a few months ago. And then also I've been to a few of the meetups as well. So this is me. Okay, so this is a bit, bit of an overview of what we're going to be going through. We're going to be looking at front-end frameworks, then we're going to a bit more into Svelte itself. So, front-end frameworks, a little bit of a history comes down to, we started with jQuery. We now all hate jQuery. But back in the early 2000s, everyone loved jQuery. So JavaScript has evolved a lot over these past, yeah, like 15 years. Now our APIs are way better and we're expecting more. And this is where things like AngularJS came. Um, this was like really the big changing moment in front-end frameworks and I think most people here probably used AngularJS to some level before moving on to the more modern frameworks which you have at the bottom. So generally, we, I spend most of my time with React, but I have had some experience with Angular as well, and then Vue is quite nice. So, um, I guess in the audience, has everyone used one of these three modern frameworks? Yeah? Okay. And how many people have actually used Vue? Okay, that's also good. So that would be relevant. So the other question is, why do we care about frameworks? So we all use frameworks for JavaScript, but why? Does anyone have any good answer for me as to why you want to use a framework yourself? Yeah? To avoid code spaghetti. Yes, that definitely is one of the problems with JavaScript. So yeah, it uh, can be an organizational tool is one of the things we can do with it. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else who uses frameworks feels that you know it's better than vanilla JavaScript? Uh, to make everyone follow the same path. Okay, yeah. So like on big projects especially, JavaScript is very, very flexible, which we love from time to time, but we also hate more often than we love. So obviously a frameworks, especially ones like Angular, really enforce a certain style. React a bit less so, so not always with React, I think. But yeah, there's a lot of reasons we use frameworks. That's some good ones. There's also a lot of additional power that we get given by the developers of these frameworks. Okay, so this is probably one of the reasons why we use it because JavaScript often makes no sense. We have very interesting uses of um, the double equals sign, which is also why we avoid the double equals sign. But yeah, JavaScript, it can be a really weird language where stuff doesn't make sense. Okay, so Svelte, what really is Svelte? Svelte is a front-end framework, but it's not like the rest. It's a bit different. It's actually a compiler. So Svelte will compile your code. You write it in Svelte format, it will compile it down to a bundle. This bundle will then be used the same way you use any other bundle. You just put it in and it will play as normal. That's what's quite nice about Svelte. It's low dependency, pretty quick, and then also the bundle sizes tend to be very tiny. So it's a brand new approach to frameworks because the other three and then frameworks before that were much more dependency-based, dependency-orientated. You had to get libraries and install everything. Could be a hassle, it's hard to upgrade. Svelte kind of centralizes it into more of um, a compiler. And it's a really good idea. That's kind of surprising no one's really thought about it in the past. So yeah, it's a new approach. Um, it was also from Rich Harris of the New York Times. So he's pretty much the main driving force behind it. Kind of like with Vue, it's pretty much a one-man team. They have some other people that helps out, but it's very much a passion project that you can see that he's really pushing it um, across the, the, the thing. And it started in the late 2016s, and we're currently on version three. Uh, version two to three had some big changes, so that kind of made a lot of improvements over what it was doing previously. But Svelte really um, is starting to get a bit more traction in certain, in certain areas, but it's still very new. Um, so yeah, it is compiled JavaScript. So what, one of the main benefits we get from compiling it is we get these tiny bundle size, which is really helpful when we care about how big these libraries are getting, especially things like Angular is massive. And even React these days, like React DOM is also a very big dependency to include. So this can really help in 
when you have very when you have very critical speeds that you want your networks to be achieving. Uh, yep. Yeah. Also because it's a compiler, you can do better error tracing. Because again, as we know, JavaScript the type errors for everything and it never, never really helps. The low dependencies is another huge bonus that we get. Uh, and you can get the extra efficiency because you're not, re you're not requiring a library to kind of interpret the APIs that you're writing. It's going directly to vanilla JavaScript. So the bundle itself is just down to vanilla JavaScript. It will work everywhere with every browser. Um, Yes, I guess the other question which I didn't actually answer was what does svelte mean? So svelte is uh, a French word and it just means slim or small uh, and that's kind of very reflecting in the actual technology itself. So some of the technology, it uses observables um, partly for the way it's storing data which is actually quite nice, it's, um, similar to what Angular does but then the actual structure is very resemblant of Vue so that's also why I asked um, who's using a view, because when you look, when I showed the code, I think in the next slide, you will see it is a very similar format to view. So that often will turn off a lot of developers, especially React developers, because React and Vue are very different. Um, but yeah, the version three does help to reduce boilerplate a lot. So one of the big things was version three changed the way that um, the kind of the state was handled. So it means that it will actually update. Uh, variables on the fly without having to require additional requests, which has been a lot better and it's kind of the way that um, React has also gone, they've kind of streamlined some of their processes. Okay, so the code, the general style is like this. You have a script at the top, a style, and then you have your um, HTML at the bottom. Unlike React, the HTML doesn't have to be one, uh, one object, there can be many objects here. That's one of the big differences. Then on top of this, we basically just have our scripting here. So this is very similar to Vue in the, the general look of it. Um, you kind of can put everything into one place. And I think you get a lot of opinions on both sides. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, especially probably if you're more used to things like React, it's probably quite a, um, a worry. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, this one, you also have the lifecycle hook. So this is similar to what we have in React in general. So we have the things like the on mount, on destroy. This reacts similar to lifecycle hooks that we get in React. Uh, then we also, uh, this one is um, basically use of a store to store data in memory in a similar way to you would use Redux in React, um, using observables instead in this situation. So it's a little bit more, uh, it's less opinionated. So this kind of comes down to the developer themselves and the discipline they have. Then we just have our styling and our HTML text. So, a little bit more detailed code where we kind of breaking it down into the script and the, um, the HTML. So the HTML does have similar attributes that you get in Vue and in Angular. So you're getting things like you're putting the each over here instead into their own um, declarative ways. And then you have the curly braces to insert the variables that you want. So it kind of mixes it, mixes the languages together, or mixes the frameworks together a little bit, and it produces something that is a little bit different. But at the same time, I think it's quite accessible to anybody who has worked with any of the other frameworks in the past. It provides usually you can get quite a lot done with not writing too too much boilerplate as well, which is a nice thing with it and then just uh, the stylings in general. Uh, okay, so generally, one of the things with Svelte is it's a very, very new technology. It's not really been uh, pick, taken up massively by any one company. You see in a few small areas, um, I guess the biggest companies are like New York Times and GoDaddy, which apparently use it in some areas, but it's still not hugely used currently in those. Uh, yeah, the, one of the big things that people like about it is the tiny bundling you can get out of it, which is really nice compared because that's one of the things that oftentimes people complain about with a lot of these other frameworks is the bundles are too big and this really addresses that problem, but it doesn't really cut the corners, which is nice. The, the version 2 to 3 big change is both a good and a bad thing because I found when I started looking at Svelte when version 3 first came out, it's such a big shift and there are so many previous packages and previous um, things created for it that it was hard to kind of uh, find the new stuff that would actually work with the new version of it, which is a little bit of a problem. And then I think 
because of this and the rapidly evolving part, Svelte can be a little bit of a problem. There's a, a lot of changes happening very fast because it's kind of like one person's passion project. So it kind of progresses along very, very quickly, which I think can be a problem when you want to build a big, robust application in it. It's hard to keep up and hard to keep updating the compiler itself along the way because um, the APIs can change quite a lot still. Uh, then the, the developer base is also very limited, partly because it's still a new thing that you just don't have the community you get with like React or Vue or Angular. It's still growing. It's not growing at the same rate as any of those three, which is, can be a problem when you're trying to find help or you want to find information about things you have with it. However, the actual documentation on the website is really good and the community behind it is actually pretty good as well. Just that even in like a, a lot of the code editors, we're using uh, .svelte files most of the time. That's usually not so well um, optimized for even like in Visual Studio Code, which I use it in, when you have the plugins for it, it still has some wonky parts to it. It kind of interprets it like TypeScript sometimes for me, which is a bit weird. So I think it's one of those things that's still new, it's still evolving, there's a lot happening there. I think it's a fun thing to play around with and it's a good thing to kind of get a few small services up and running with. But I think in terms of using it for a big project in a major way, it still has its problems that you'd probably better off using probably Vue would be one of the closer ones to it at this stage. So yeah, um, it's interesting. I would also advise people to also like play around with it. The website is pretty good. It has some interactive tutorials that work quite well. Um, but yeah, there's still a long way to go, I think, before it's really a viable big uh, you viably used in big projects. Okay, so uh, how about any questions about felt? Uh, yes. So it's a compiler. Mm -hmm. it compiles from language. Mm -hmm. That's the language where it compiles from. Oh, so basically, you're writing. I mean, it's a version of JavaScript in general. So it's um, the felt uh, API itself, where it gives you. Yeah, a few shortcuts and like uh, kind of similar to what we see in the code, it has um, the different uh, APIs that it has with it and it is just a variant on JavaScript, but instead of kind of like with most libraries, they will kind of keep it in so it will be interpreted when the browser is using it. This one, it kind of bundles it all up previously, it takes out all these dependencies and it fills them in with the equivalent in the vanilla JavaScript. So it's trying to make the, the lower level a little bit more accessible as well. So you are basically just writing JavaScript, but it has the Svelte APIs in there and the hooks in there that allow you to op operate like a normal framework, but pulling them out before compiled, uh, pull them out before it's actually put into the browser, which then improves you know, bundling and size and efficiency as well. So yeah, it's just JavaScript, really, at the end of the day, but it's a slightly different way of doing it. Okay, uh, anyone else? Yeah? Uh, you mentioned like no dependencies. Uh, if you want to make a simple hello world, can you just do it with a single file plus the spelled file? Yeah, yeah, so. Um, Backend JSON and all that others. No, you don't need any of this type of thing to get it, to get it going. Obviously, like when you get like bigger projects, you will have other dependencies, but in terms of Svelte itself, you can get a very simple, just like the Svelte file, you can run it through the compiler itself, it'll give you the bundle file at the end of it, and then that will be all that requires. And then like I say, the bundling size that they give you is always very good, so even for like larger applications, it will compile down to actually pretty small, um, pr a pretty small file itself. So the actual efficiency is really nice, and that's been one of the big kind of driving forces behind it, one of the big things that people take away from Svelte in general is like the bundling, because I know bundling, especially with Angular, has been like a big kind of uh, big issue where people are always like wanting it smaller and smaller. Google is trying to make it smaller, but there's still limits and there's a lot of optimization. So this is kind of like a novel way of addressing that problem, taking it from the other direction, which works pretty well actually for size. Uh, yeah. So um, c compiling it ra uh, rather than um, having it execute as a framework in runtime is, is, is an interesting 
flip. Mm -hmm. have, have the other frameworks taken notice and have they sort of investigated whether it's possible to keep their existing syntax but, uh, you know, generate a compile time version of their framework uh, instead? Has there been that mm -hmm. shift? Not that I'm aware of at the moment. I mean, it. Uh, I mean, if they are looking into it, I guess it's not been something that's been made openly. Uh, I'm not sure how much work it would require for any of the other free frameworks to kind of flip it. It's an interesting idea. I think it can work with them as well, but it would probably require quite a lot of changes in the way that they they kind of they currently build the. Their products, so I guess it's one of the things they might just be like a wait and see. Like they'll see how this catches on. They'll see the community that goes behind it. If it becomes like a really big thing, and like the next big thing, then I'm sure they'll invest their time into doing it as well. At the moment, I think it's still quite early in the life cycle for it. That it doesn't actually uh, really eat into like their market at the moment. But I think in the f I wouldn't be surprised if they were looking into more of this solution. I be interested to see if there's even more companies moving this direction where they're using it more like compiled JavaScript because then you're getting real dependencies on things like Babel or TypeScript. You can kind of just really, uh, you can write it in any language you want at the end of the day. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, do you see it as like a once it's developed and matured, do you see it as like a real competition to React? Because it seems like it's moving back to the DOM, right? Mm. As you said, it's like, React is going to be like an abstraction on top yeah. of the dog. Do you see it? I guess it's more like the JavaScript friendly. Yeah, yeah. So I think it can potentially be quite a big. Um, yeah, like I think it is trying to compete in some ways with React because React, one of the big points with that is that it is like a smaller, more agile framework as well. And this is trying to be even smaller and more agile from that perspective. Also, because this one doesn't deal with things like the virtual DOM, which you get in React, it also does improve efficiency of the site as well. And then also because it compiles down to vanilla JavaScript, it means things like uh, if you want to inter create this with like web components and such, it also kind of works into that ecosystem as well. So I think if the if the um, the web community does evolve and it does use more like web components and more uh, baseline vanilla JavaScript, this type of thing would definitely start picking up more and more. I think it's one of the things where a lot of these ideas, like web components, are still a little bit new. And um, yeah, I think it could be real competition for them. But at the same time, because these companies are also massive, like I'm sure there would be like a React compiler if it really did compete in that kind of way before too long. So I think so. But I mean, like with all these things, when you have like a small develop, as, as like a small single developer, more or less, they tend to move pretty quickly. They tend to get good results. I mean, you look at Vue. Vue has progressed and matured pretty well uh, over a pretty short period as well. So. I think there's definitely a lot of potential behind it. Uh, okay, any more questions? Yeah? Can you mix um, the current framework with Svelte? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like, the, thing, the nice thing about Svelte is it just compiles down to vanilla JavaScript. So you can quite easily mix and match it between, like you can put React into it as well if you would like. It would change the dynamic of what you're doing, I suppose. Uh, but there's no reason why you can't mix and match them. It just means the bundling might be a little bit different. And it, it, it's fine from that perspective because you can uh, also do like the plug and play kind of like if you're going to do like more like a web component or so, it's easy to plug in as well. So yeah, there's nothing stopping you mixing and matching it. It just might have a bit of overlap that doesn't make it necessary as well, I think would be the hope. Uh, any other question? Yeah. Can you uh, split it up into components? Yeah, so it is a component-based framework as well, similar to. Can you give an example uh, of components. I guess I. Why is that there? So, from a component standpoint, uh, where is it? Oh, it's right at the end. So, from a component standpoint, uh, this is not the right one. This is TypeScript. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no wrong one, right? So yeah, it does do components, this one. And where are we at? So yeah, so I basically have the like the root type of thing. So here I have the different components. 
that I kind of grou that I group together. And then from here, for example, what's the smaller one? The input, I think. This one it then has the separate component structure as well. And it kind of, it's similar to Vue as well, that it, uh, the styling is very localized to this file. So on the, the base level, you can break them up into the components that you want, you can arrange them any, any way that you want as well. And then internally, it's just writing the parts, breaking the components down into smaller things where possible, also using different handlers and such. So. Yeah, it does operate very similar to all the other modern frameworks. They are very component driven, which does help because then it's the same, um, same style you've been using the whole time as well. Okay, uh, any other questions? No, are we okay? Okay, sure, no problem.